Hey YouTube, welcome to a new educational Tarkov raid series. This series will be specifically focused on helping players improve their ability to survive more raids. For you to get the maximum benefit from the series, I'll be asking for a time investment from you. This is not a quick 10 tips to survive more raids video, but instead an in-depth guide on all aspects of surviving Tarkov. It's important therefore for me to be very clear about why you should invest that time in the series. The series will be a full playthrough of a new standard account with a goal to reach max traders, or at least as far as we can before wipe. To fully invest in the focus to survive, I'll not only be running this mid wipe, which will leave us very undergeared, but I'll also be putting some restrictions in place to double down on the importance of survival. No secure container. This will mean that everything we take in or everything we loot is at risk at all times. The only exception here is we can use it to store keys. No insurance. Simply put, if we die, we lose everything. No flea market. Everything we're going to need for tasks and hideout upgrades we're going to have to find. We can't buy or sell on the flea market. These three restrictions, along with starting a new account mid wipe, will put a major strain on our in game finances and really focus our loot in and survival skills. Although the series is not aimed at brand new players as such, we will be covering loadout choices, task decisions and approach. PMC spawns and map pathings, and on the fly decision making, which every player who wants to improve their survival skills should benefit from. The plan is to put out approximately two to three episodes a week, each with three to four raids. It seems like the game will wipe in around six weeks, so we'll see how far we can get. Finally, while our early survival and progress will force us to evade PvP conflict as much as possible, as we rank up the traders and gain access to better gear and ammo, we can start to hold our own in PvP combat. I'll warn you now, this could get a little brutal at times, so welcome along for the ride. After choosing our name of faction, I inspected all the trader items to get to level 2 and cleaned up our stash. We then accepted our starter tasks and were ready for our first raid. Before we jump in, I'm really excited to share with you a product I've been using for over 18 months now and it literally brought me back from the gaming wilderness. After years of working long hours as a web developer, my back shoulder and neck pain had got so bad that I would get headaches every day, leading to migraines and often wiping me out for the whole day. I knew I had to make a change, and for two years I gave up gaming and cut my work hours in half. After some research, it seemed like a variable height desk might be the solution. With the benefits of being able to change my posture as required to avoid the strain on the same areas of my body for prolonged periods. This is where I found FlexiSpot, and in my case E7 sit-stand desk. I chose the E7 not only due to the large amount of options for the frame, desk shape, size and finish, but also because of the digital controls that allow me to preset four heights that I use the most in the memory for easy access. With easy adjustment in centimeter increments, I could save them to the perfect height for me and then access them at the touch of a button when needed. What I found when it was arrived was a really strong, well-built, great looking desk with a quite motorized operation. As my setup has grown to what you've seen now, the desk has handled all the extra weight and remains really sturdy. Here's a full list of features and customization options for the E7, and I honestly couldn't recommend the sit-stand desk enough. Not only did it allow me to return to full-time work and my gaming passion, but I literally wouldn't have been making videos on YouTube right now if I hadn't taken some action. A big thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Not just because the support will help me keep improving the channel and its content, but importantly for me, it's allowed me to discuss an issue that I'm very passionate about, having experienced firsthand the effects poor posture habits can have. There are tons of different shapes and sizes for every budget on the FlexiSpot website, which I'll link down in the description below. And from the 25th to the 28th of November, you can get up to 31% off in the Black Friday sale. And if you want to find out how you have a chance of getting one of these desks for free, then make sure you check the description for details. We will be running our scav throughout the playthrough to help out with cash flow and a few task items, but also to allow our PMC raids to stay focused on survival. After a quick scav in and out of factory, we jump into our first raid. I always take care of mechanics introduction tasks first to unlock Jaeger, as we'll need his level 1 gear for some early tasks. As Woods is a big map, the start of gear M4 will give us the best chance at mid range. You'll see, we'll always be taking in an armor and a headset. In this case, we just have a level two packer, but a headset, as audio is so important in Tarkov and allow us to adjust our path in as required. Finally, I'll also take extra meds. It will get expensive if we die a lot, but I don't ever want to die because we run out of meds. 
Okay, here we go. First raid of the series. Uh, so we've spawned over on the north side. Uh, so we're quite a way away from where we want to get to. Uh, we're over by the sort of sunken village. So we've got quite a trek. That means that people will be not only spawning around us, but they'll be spawning in front of us, like between where we are and where we need to go. So there's no point rushing up there because we're just going to bump into people. Um, but we're also not planning on looting because we don't want anyone from behind or the side of us catching up with us either. So we're going to keep moving, but we're not going to run. Uh, welcome to the new series. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy it. I'm going to try and make it as educational as possible. But also, it's uh, the idea is to keep progressing. Uh, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be charging for it uh, because of the restrictions we've got in place. There's no need. The biggest thing we're going to be doing is prioritizing survival. I just want to make sure we're on single fire because a stock hit. Excuse me, a stock M4 is not fun to shoot at anything other than the shotgun range in full auto. It kicks like a mule. Uh, so we're getting to a point now where we could be running into players if they've come this way. So I'm just going to have a little listen. So we're just coming over a ridge. Taking a second to listen before we uh, we head down. Uh, so obviously we're heading into what is Jaeger's camp, which is where the letter will be. We have got to cross a road here, so we'll take an extra second. What we won't do is we won't sit around for long. We're not seeing or hearing any movement, so we're going to keep moving. We need to get across this road. A player shooting us. There's no scavs angling that way, so we're in a bit of trouble there. He's right up on that hill, which is one of the spawns that were in f that I mentioned that were in front of us. Uh, he's still shooting at us, which suggests that he might have a thermal scope, because you can see how much is between us. At uh, this time of the white, it's not surprising for someone to have a thermal scope sitting up on a hill. That will be a big problem for us because uh, we will never get a chance to see him with this scope. It's not even like we could rotate and try and take him out from a different angle. We literally won't be able to see him. So we're going to take a really wide angle here. To be honest, it's... if people have come in here with uh, high caliber, obviously sniper rifles and things and thermals, then we are literally sitting ducks. I'm not going to lie, this is going to be rough at the start. I should have pre-warned you. Uh, but again, like I was about to say, <laughs> surviving is going to be... Uh, Focusing on survival here is the most important thing. It doesn't ha matter how long we take, although I want to try and be optimal with timings in terms of not spending ages in raid. Uh, but sometimes we're going to have to make detours like this. Uh, so there were some scavs up there above us. So obviously we could to look to take them out. But again, you'll find that some missions or some quests, uh, raids that we do, we'll look to take out some scavs. We're not too worried about our life. But others we are. Now, I'm running here just because we're so in the open. And somebody is shooting from behind us again. I don't know if that's the goon squad. It would be really weird to have them... Like... Very strange to be shot at from here. Like through the trees. 
Somebody's actually hit us there. We're going to deal with the bleed. Uh, and we can't deal with the leg, so we're in pretty much big trouble here. Because we have nothing to repair the leg. But like we've got thermals galore going on here. We are going to try and repair a few bits while we're crawling around. <laughs> Pretty much sitting ducks. Uh, this could definitely be a scuff raid. I'm not going to spend too much time here because if people got eyes on us, there's maybe nothing we can do. We are going to need the painkillers to run because of the leg. I'm going to try not lose another leg. There's absolutely no point in us taking too long here because we're almost certainly dead. Also, we have one set of painkillers. which means that when these run out, we're hobbling our way home, unless we can find a CMS kit, which is very unlikely. So we're gonna run out of energy because we're gonna keep taking painkillers. So that's what I mean by Hobbling. Just going to do it for a second here because we have got quite a bit of cover. We're going to have to move. I feel like there was a player to our right here. Almost certainly. We do not want to fight, but he's literally in the way. Here we can bait out of here. There's scabs on our left. It's the stamina back. Wow. Uh, our problem here is we're going to be really exposed. Uh, you can see these don't last very long. It's about to wear out and we only have a couple more so we're going to be hobbling and we have to get all the way to the other side of the map i'm going to keep a wide berth from the right where we're getting shot And there's two players right there. Welcome to Tarkov. <laughs> We're super dead here. I was about to say, I'd be surprised if they don't throw a grenade over. GG's. Not a lot we could do there, even if it was one of them. Uh, pretty rough. Honestly, not too much we could have done there. Maybe an aggressive push at the end before the painkillers run out, but I was hoping he didn't hear me go prone and would have picked the angle for a second longer. It was a bit of a brutal start, but we'll grab an identical loadout and jump straight back in.
Okay, we have the top of rain. So that first raid couldn't have gone any worse, really. Um, literally. I don't think it could have gone any worse in terms of uh, everything that happened there. Uh, hopefully, we'll, I'll be able to show through the series how we can uh, we can survive a lot of raids, but something like that, I'm not sure how we survived that. Uh, so we're over um, by outskirts, so that's the scab house here. Now there is a spawn potentially in front of us, um, and also ones to the left. So we're moving around to the right hand side here. I basically want to make it straight across the middle of the map before everyone else. So unless we get unlucky and have a, a spawn up in front of us, then we could get to the other side before anyone else gets to the middle, which is why I'm, I'm moving straight away, which is why I started running right at the start. Uh, I'm actually going to take a wide berth here, right down by the water. There's a, there's a hut over here, just by the woods, that people like to run to straight away, because it's got some good attachments and things. So we're going to stay well clear of that. Uh, it's foggy enough that we shouldn't get sniped from the other side either. So, to be fair, this is basically our safest part of this raid. So unless someone spawned right up here in front of us, then we'll be looking to do this bit quickly. Because the last thing I want to do is have to charge across the middle of the map in the open. when everyone else has got in position on the other side. So we're taking a risk here just to make this run across. Sometimes on a clear day you can get sniped from over there, so you wouldn't come so close to the edge. Uh, it is possible for the boss and his minions to hang around over here, so we do have to be careful. Again, we're not going to take it slow. At this point, only one or two people could have got towards the middle, so everyone else would have been too far away. So we're just going to, because we're running across the middle here, we're going to take a uh, painkiller, just preemptively, because if we get shot in the leg, I don't want to be stuck out in the middle here. You can see on the other side, How much, uh, how much view they have of us. So I'm just going to get some stamina back here. So this is very dangerous. It's, it's almost suicidal, but it's literally we have to cross. So this is the best place to cross this early. And we certainly won't be looting anything. We're now moving up to the other side and the potential of somebody being up on this hill is, is quite high if they move straight off a of spawn. What normally happens is there's a big med camp and thing over there. So people like to obviously go and loot that. It depends if they're here for loot or if they're here for Sturman. If they're here for Sturman, they'll come up here straight away. If they're here for loot, they'll go over there. So we're looking to get in a bit of cover here and have a listen. Is this bush? And then try and avoid. I'm not going to stay here too long because if somebody is looting that, they might move up here. You can also get scabs wander down here. Okay, let's keep going. Again, not running here. If anyone's up here trying to kill scabs up on these hills, I do not want to make them aware of where we are by running. Hopefully we'll get to a point where we get some decent armor and we can tank one or two bullets, but until that point. I 
I'm going to move away from those rocks where the scabs might be. And we're going to move into this wooded area where the Jaeger's camp is. I'm not hanging around too much here. People shouldn't normally par through here. There's no reason to come to this camp unless you're doing this original task. So there's not a natural pathing through here, but obviously we have to be aware in case somebody does. Uh, so that's the camp. I'm just going to grab this letter. So if this was the start of the wipe, this is hectic as hell. This is so populated around here. But everyone's using rubbish gear. So if you do meet someone, it's a fair fight. But this time of the wipe, there is no such thing as a fair fight. So we've moved away from a lot of danger here now. Very rare to have people hanging around over this side. Uh, we're seven minutes into the raid. Hopefully we've got outskirts. Oh, hopefully we've got ZB16 up. Otherwise we have to head over to the uh, RUAF. Just need a bit of luck here to not have any players hanging around late that, at this point. There's no reason for them to be here. You can get scabs wandering around here as well. Uh, so that's the bunker, but there's no green smoke, which means it's not open. This game hates me. <laughs> Uh, that would have been our extract, we'd have been done. Feeling we're in for some pain today. You're much more likely to have scavs here than players, which is why I'm running. Uh, we're over here so early, unless someone is new or lost or has some other strange reason for being here. And there's no reason for them to be over by this extract after seven minutes. Unless they're camping it, of course. And that's the only reason I'm moving this fast. That and because I don't want anyone to get here. Let's just take it down in this dip for a second. Just give us some natural cover. Our extract up, up ahead. Again, we've got natural cover here. It's not normally good to stand by a white wall because you stick out like a, you know, a sore thumb, but because we've got the natural cover there at this part, I don't mind. And then just in case someone's got a long shot lined up. We're just gonna take cover there and move quick. Okay, all right, we'll take that. Okay, we're off and running. We unlocked Jaeger, inspected his items, and grabbed his first task acquaintance. This requires us to fetch seven food items, which we'll get from Interchange. Before that, we run a scav raid into Reserve. Because we won't be able to access the keys from the flea market, Reserve filing cabinets are going to be a great source for early task keys, as well as gas analyzers, which we'll need soon. Okay, jumping into our first interchange raid, we took the same loadout but changed to a bigger rig so we could fit more items in. I don't take backpacks here, as we want to leave through no backpack extract as it's going to be safer. Okay, so we're spawning to interchange over by Emicon. Um, we're actually going to quickly hit this this first stash. I'm going to put up on screen a, uh, a map where the Iskras are. 
Uh, they're guaranteed spawns in all of these locations. So we're going to end up coming back here a few times to get all of this stuff, but... And I'm not even going to loot the rest of that because being out here at this early stage is quite risky. Uh, there's spawn up here and potential spawns up here. So you're quite exposed over this side, especially as a lot of people will bring, especially at this stage of the wipe, they'll bring a sort of one to four, one to six time scope. So you can get in trouble quite quickly hanging around outside. Unfortunately, all of the spawns we need for the Iskras are outside. One thing I did forget to bring was some money for the car. Uh, you should always bring the 4,000 or whatever it is for the car because you'd be able to get out. Um, we default to the no backpack extract just because that's a guaranteed way to get out without going to the 2B extracts, which are uh, often camped and uh, quite exposed. So I'm just looking up the top there. Uh, we have another spawn up here. I'm just going to see if they've put the uh, power on. They haven't. That's never a good sign. I prefer they put the power on because then at least I know they're going to go inside with that normally. I'll have a little listen here. So be, the, the first target here is to get the Iskras. If we can get inside, then we will. It's a decent spawn for inside, to be fair. Uh, so see how we feel when we come up here. But I wouldn't mind just hitting three Iskra spots and getting out and then jumping straight back in. Yeah, we've got fight inside. Just need to be careful of this spawn up in front of us here. Uh, Iskras don't spawn up in Goshen in the uh, in the food department, so it sounds like someone's over there. So we're actually going to divert to. We go inside. We're going to hit the Goshen food court instead. The way I like to do this is the no backpack extract is over here. And there's a little, uh, There's a, there's a way in that's kind of like, I'll say hidden, but obviously people know where it is, it's on the map, but it's hidden in terms of, uh, it's not one of the main ramps that comes up. Whilst it still has its risks, it's a little bit safer than walking up those big ramps that we spawned at, especially in terms of us not having any long range. The only downside to this is we are gonna come up in the middle of both sides. So. Most of the people here is walking on wood. They know where we are. Have a quick listen here before we enter. Uh, but we're so close to the food on this side that I really, I really do want to try and hit it if we can. I know we've got one in scrub. Up. Well, that's not far away from where we're going to end up being. Didn't get the sense that it was by the food court, so hopefully they're on the other side of the wall over by idea. There's no reason for someone to be shooting over here. You don't get scabs on this side, unless they're trying to hit them at range. This is the food area. Let's have a quick listen just to make sure they wasn't on this side.
We've only got limited space, so we're going to be a bit picky about what we get here. Uh, green tea will take... Don't need that. Don't need that. Can't really see what that is. That's fruit. We need to examine some of this stuff anyway. Peas we don't need. Green tea we're going to take just in case we need it for the bar, uh, for director's key, in case we don't get lucky and find it. There's another one there, so that's two of those. Picking up the peas. I just want to let that plane go by, but we managed to find two squashes as well. Uh, so between these and the two squashes, we can actually get uh, we can actually get the director's key as a barter from therapist. Uh, we're taking the humpbacks because we can trade them for a. We can trade them for a uh, a car med kit, which we can use to. Craft the salavers. I feel like I had someone on the other side of the wall there. I'm not going to spend much longer in here. So that's humpback. We'll take that as well. Uh, we're actually not allowed to use this, so uh, we're going to get rid of those two so that we can carry these, and then we're just going to get out. We've got about half the stuff we need here. I can definitely hear someone on that side now. And we'll get out the no backpack extract, which was just under the bit, just behind the bit that we came through, the dark wooden bit, walkway. And then we're going to reset. We're going to do that maybe two or three times if we get lucky, obviously more if we get killed, until we got all those bits we need. There'll be plenty of time to loot for money and for other stuff, like toolboxes and things. Right now, we're concentrating on surviving with these bits. Feel like I heard something. Might have just been the rain outside. I think there's some sort of uh, I think there's a bit of ambience coming through on the rain. You have to be careful here. You could fall down and break a lot of things and obviously we can't mend anything we have no cms kits so it's actually going to be one of the hardest things is to have to take a CS, cms kit in every time and not be able to uh, and have it be uh, lost if we die and also just the space it takes up that's all lootable space we normally put in the secure container which we're not going to be able to do We need to come in and go to the food store again because we didn't find everything and we also need to hit some more iskras so if any luck we get out here as long as it's 33 minutes it is and we're going to keep doing these sort of short sharp runs obviously hopefully not dying but if we die then they're, they're still short and sharp they're just a bit more wasted trying to limit the exposure we have This is a no backpack extract for anyone who doesn't know. Nice and simple. Uh, I'm going to try and remember to bring the, uh, the like the 4,000 rubles this time, just in case we get up the other end and want to extract. It was nice and simple. Hopefully you can do a couple more of those.
Pretty simple path in decisions there to avoid potential fights and we got nearly half the items we need for the acquaintance task. A quick turnaround and we head straight back into interchange using the same loadout with the same objective. Okay, so we spawned over by the power station. Now there is some Iskra spawns over here, which we're gonna grab. Uh, I didn't bring the money again, did I? Yeah. Uh, there's some jackets in here. One thing we're gonna do first is, where are we? I'm gonna turn on the power. That does tell people where we are, but it also means that anybody that's looking to get inside on some of the high tier loot spawns are not gonna be, uh, not gonna be need to come and turn the power on means I'm sure they might come here for a fight if that's their intention if they're here to loot then there's no need for them to come here now then there is like toolboxes and things here I will search those filing cabinets um, but we I'm not at, you know what I am gonna search the filing cabinets but that is it we do need that for a task Because we just don't have the room. There's no point picking up a lot of stuff because if we find the food that we need, the Iskras for instance, then we're going to be dropping it anyway. So there's no point spending time on it. Uh, so we're like, what, three raids in? This is our fourth raid and we haven't shot a single scab, even though we've got like five scabs to kill. And there is a very good reason for that. Shame the car's there. It's because if we can get through these couple of early tasks, it's going to open up a lot of kill quests for us. And we're going to end up having to shoot them anyway. So rather than exposing ourselves by shooting scabs here, slowing us down, potentially drawing attention to ourselves, or worse, I heard a footstep. There's toolboxes here, but again, we're just going to walk past them because we're after this. This is our escrows. We're not even going to wait for the other stuff. That wasn't a person, so... We're going to take a peel here because we've got to cross, go across the open. I often find that the spawn on our left here, if they come this way, they'll catch us around this point if we move here at this about the speed, so... I feel like I just heard someone again. So I'm moving away from where we were because it sounded like footsteps there. I've got to be honest, I think there's a bug in the game right now where when scabs spawn, they kind of drop into the world and it sounds like footsteps. I, honestly, I, haven't, I haven't read anything online about it, but I feel like there is. Uh, so there's some loose meds here sometimes, and there's also a bag here. So obviously we will grab anything that's useful. Um, that's not so useful. Grab it for now, see what else we get. Again, we got a decent spawn. For... Uh, for the food stores. But the question is, do we go up there? We've got our two iskers we need. So do we risk trying to get the other two items? Personally, I'm going to say yes, because we've, we're so close. If we was on the other side of the map, then I wouldn't bother that. We did have shooting over around these warehouses. So you need to be a bit careful. So just going back to why we didn't bring a backpack here into Lighthouse, uh, into Interchange, because we, 
we could lo loot a lot more than we are. And the reason being is because the two extracts that you need to get out of, assuming that we didn't bring money for the car, which of course we should, um, are notoriously difficult to get out of unscathed. Uh, we need that for the task actually, we'll take it for now. So that's, that's money, but we will just swap it for, we'll clear out some meds. Just gonna have a little listen here. Again, if this was only in the white, there'd be a lot more people hanging around this area. But again, the fights would be fair. <laughs> and they're not going to be fair right now. Let's see what space we got. That's not worth as much. We'll keep that just because these two, because they're for tasks. But we'll look to drop some of these. Uh, Splint can go. Some of these things can go if we, uh, if we find what we need. So we're literally just focused in on two items in particular. So we need some croutons, which are here. That's one. Uh, we'll take those because they're for needed for task later. They're not the Tachonka we need right now, but we will need them later. So we just need one more beef stew. I'd be gutted if we don't find it in here. Don't want to really have to come back. Again, this is good for later. We need 15 of those for a therapist task. Just need a little bit of luck now. That looks like a beef. Perfect. Okay. Uh, right, so let's lose one of them, one of them. I feel like I just heard someone to the left. Again, it might be a scav dropping in. Not taking any chances here, we're getting straight out if we can. Uh, there can be scavs spawning around right here, all across this right hand area where the shopping is, where the kiosks are. And also get killers spawned around here. That wouldn't be fun. But yeah, going, going to the back, Shit so that's the scab. Off. I don't mind shooting this guy just simply because he just walked off. We do need kills, but it will attract attention to us. So no, he's walked away. We're just going to not engage. They should always... There should also be good early warning for us, should there be any players around. Yeah, so the two extracts, that's not the, the car, which is not a guaranteed extract anyway, are, uh, are pretty difficult to get out of. You have to walk a long way to get to them. A lot of people have the same extract, including scabs, player scabs. So it's a high risk, they're high risk extracts and they're often camped because there's only two main extracts. We're trying to avoid going to those if possible. So by not bringing the backpack, not looting it here, we're reducing the risks on that side of things. Obviously we don't know where the uh, airdrop came down. People could be drawn completely away from us or they could be drawn right over to us depending where it landed, but we're gonna try and focus on what we need. I'm gonna take a peel here, just in case we get caught outside. Just heading to our no backpack extract again.
because we have everything we need to finish this task. We will take the lighter while we're here. Oh, we can't because we can't take that. It's annoying when it puts it straight in, but we'll always make sure we uh, we remove stuff. Really happy to get those last items for acquaintance and get that task out of the way. This now opens up a bunch of woods tasks, which is where we'll spend the next few raids. For now though, that brings us to the end of episode one. After the worst of starts, we managed to survive the next three raids and progress up to level four. This will give us a good base to push on next episode. Don't forget, liking the video and leaving a comment is free and really helps the channel out. For now though, thanks for watching, and if you want to learn how to make millions as a scav on Lighthouse, then check out this playlist here.